And a friend of mine came up to me and said, you've got to check this album out. And he played me Penthouse on Pavement and I was just blown away by it. Just sonically, it was so amazing. And um, I'd had to get a copy, do you know, it was one of those things. And I loved it immediately. They sounded really fresh and exciting and loads of attitude. And I, I loved the sort of, it was quite cerebral, wasn't it? It's kind of humorous in so much as the, uh, the emerging yuppie culture kind of got it slightly wrong. They, they were loving it, but, you know, I don't think they quite understood, no. you know. They, I think they took it at face value, they didn't see the, uh, the, the kind of pastiche or the, the, the humour, you know. What I found um, fascinating uh, with, with uh, Martin's production was um, he, he just managed to make one little sound sound so big. And I would struggle so hard in the studio, even when we were recording Kids in America. Uh, and I was, I was really trying to get separation between every instrument and I was really kind of struggling with it. And they just made it seem effortless. Every track just had a beautiful, empty sound to it, but so full at the same time. It's very, very clever how they did that. Good album. Yeah, good. Is that it? Enjoyable, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, nice influences, nice, a nice move in a, in a new direction, I thought. You listen to it now and go, wow, that's a great song. Wow, that's a fantastic song too. Lots of DJs still really ramming home songs like Play to Win and just playing them out at big nights, you know, and they still still go down. Oh, let's all make a bomb. That's very clever. It was cynical, but it was sung so lightheartedly. So I thought, I love that contrast. I just thought the, the, the audacity of that, that there's a sort of semi-ironic, semi-sense of resignation of like, you know, ah, let's just get on with it and, you know, the world's going to hell in a handcart, let's blow it up. The album was great. I mean, I specifically remember the sleeve. I just thought the sleeve was so funny. You know, opening doors all over the world, you know, with, with this fabulous parody of, of a cover that looked like an annual report. Uh, and so that was really fabulous, you know. And so already, you know, just seeing the sleeve, I was, I was ready for the album. The whole idea of the sleeve was, was, was fascinating as well because it was very, it was very odd for, for northern working class, class men, in a way, to wear a suit and tie because it signified all the wrong things. So it was kind of a brave decision in a way because it signified what ultimately the 80s came about, which was kind of greed, it was banal jobs, it was kind of, um, you know, cutting yourself off from any you know, enlightened spiritual energy. The, the image that, that came out um, is, is, is still, is one we're, we're sort of both, I think, very pleased with. I think it came out right. And it was a difficult one to do in a way because we could have done it in a lot of different ways. The, the sort of corniness of it and the sort of slight kitschness of it is something which is actually terribly important. But the fact that I chose to make it as a painting, um, I think gives it sort of a particular kind of feel. The length of time, in a sense, spent on it has given it a kind of clarity, a kind of openness, I think, um, which sort of allows you to smile. And, and to see that, you know, they're making some sort of quite serious comments at the same time. I remember it was actually more the, uh, more the cover that I was really fascinated by because I'm obsessed with, like, 80s art, art, album artwork particularly. I remember just thinking, this is brilliant. It's like office stuff and it's so cold and it's so... Everything I love about electronic music is that sort of weird, cold, angular sort of I'm a professor of music type thing, you know, like I'm a doctor of synth. <laughs> um, Type thing, and I just thought that was really cool. I don't care about life or the world around me. I was really pleased with taking the electronic sound of the old Human League and created something new, and it worked. The album was uh, Album of the Year in Melody Maker, 1981, which we we're immensely proud of. It was genuine, genuinely regarded as a, a, a something new and exciting and different. Um, and that doesn't happen very often. It was unbelievable. We got rave reviews and suddenly us, you know, three lads from Sheffield, were pop stars. You couldn't be any prouder, a fantastic feeling. Like, all of a sudden, like, your son's a pop star. Can't <laughs> believe this. It was like walking downtown with him like, when he first set off. And people stopping for his autograph, like... 
Fantastic. And girls were running, running after you. You could hear these footsteps going, boom, boom. and you'd know somebody was going running behind you, and they were going to ask Glenn for his autograph. It, it was some fun. great. Really loved it. And he got a good voice. Yeah. I didn't know that until he started singing. <laughs> Not even <in> we. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I used to go to the Bridge Inn, which is their local, the local. pub, he used to shout, the fucking Beatles are here. <laughs> <laughs> get around in. My mate used to get a play off it as well, you see. This, uh, this is Glenn Gregory's dad. Is it? Oh! <laughs> Have a pipe, mate. Go on in. <laughs> but she just never missed a thing, just, oh, don't stop me, feeling them I used to go and stand in Smith's and look through all the music papers. <laughs> and show, I'm Pauline Gregory. I, no, I, I never, ever did that. I never, <laughs> ever did that. We just loved it. It was great. I bought my mum a car. You know, you, everybody should do that when they get the first PRS check, buy them on a car. And we took all our mates along with us. We didn't really, in fact, we still got the same friends now that we had then. Uh, we, we just bought everybody's dinner and we bought everybody's drinks because they had no money. Uh, and so we did just kind of feed everyone for quite a long time and it was great. Well, most bands gig all the time, we didn't, um, apart from the odd TV show or PA. And our very first one was at Penny's Nightclub in Sheffield in 1981. It's called Fuel now, it looks like. Or it I don't used think to be. It wasn't. It's called anything <laughs> anymore, look at the state of it. It used to be queues right around the corner. They did. And occasionally you couldn't. Let me in, let me Girl, in. Girls in winter with very <laughs> short skirts and blue legs. Press the bell. I don't know who we're going to expect to come out. The ghost of Steve. The ghost of Steve Strange. <laughs> I'm sorry, no new romantics here today. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're breaking an entry into our own past. A Derek Acora style spiritual experience. Oh, oh. oh this Look at it. this. It's hardly changed at all. You know, you're right. It hasn't. It's, that's the same bar. Exactly the same bar. This, this, this is, would have been bigger. This is where we performed. Yep. And we did Penthouse and Pavement. We did uh, Play to Win and... Oh, Play to Win, yes. Yeah, and Height of the Fighting. That's right. I'm just going to get it on my iPod now. <laughs> and have a listen. Oh, you might raise the spirits. Hello, can you hear us? There it is. We were up there doing. I know we weren't. It was just a PA, right? So we were kind of absolutely packed. The whole club was yeah. packed. You know, the first time that yeah. that we performed live in Sheffield. It was brilliant. So now here comes my job. Credit bleeding with a mob. Dreams become ideals. No one knows the way I feel. Do you know what? I even remember this because during I remember kind of hitting. Oh yes. That I said, don't when you do hail or who. Yeah. Don't, don't punch too high because you'll hit your hands. Yeah, because this was a all the low ceiling, wasn't it? God, yeah. DJ there, of course. DJ. All the equipment still there. What was he called? Uh, Disco John. Disco John. He was the DJ. Yeah, he was. Yeah, this is the yeah. Uh, the kind of area, the carpeted area. Do you know what? It could be the same carpet. I think it could be. Pretty, pretty familiar. Yeah. God, it is funny to be back in here because he can come back and can totally remember it. City club land, theatre dark land, empty house, no audience. Smiles of fortune, no man master. Play to win and break the bank. <laughs> Play to win.